to, to me, there is a tremendous resistance to new thought. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if you pose non-thought to people, in my experience, I found that to be very threatening to almost everybody. I mean, they, they want to make, hear all the reasons that's impossible. I've, I've gotten this from some of the top people in Tibet Buddhism in the United States. I mean, it's mm-hmm. absolutely impossible. You can't do that. It's not possible to speak without thinking. You have to be thinking all the time. It's, there's a tremendous institutional resistance because it's the same thing we're talking about with, with, with your examples. I mean, this is a real threat to many institutions. If you people start getting happy, what's going, what's, what am I going to do? And this no-thought thing scares the academics most of all. Yeah. Because I know myself, I was terrified. I really believed that if I stopped thinking, I was going to literally die, just fall over dead. And I was a compulsive thinker. And that's an academic, and but so here it was, no thoughts, and yet I was still alive, and so that's been the biggest challenge. I, you know, going taking this thing forward, just telling people, look, this is possible. You can do it and still function. It's not fatal, but it's a big thing for many people to hang on to those, especially academics. And when I, we say, okay, look, you can parse this out. The part that goes blah 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 is one part of your mind. The part that does what you get paid to do. Analysis, problem solving, consulting information, completely parsed out. One functions, it one functions, the other one doesn't function. So you can keep your good stuff and lose your bad stuff. But it's a big threat to people. But I think, in the, and in part, that's part of the language uh, is the barrier there. That I think when people hear no thought, they think zombie, right? right? You know, whereas. What you're saying is that there's, con- I think what you're saying is there's consciousness which is going on on its own, mm-hmm. which has nothing much to do with the I thinking, doing the doing. And then there is the aspect of our consciousness that has evolved in order to sort of more or less take credit for that and spectacularly display that, possibly for reasons of sexually selective fitness, but which comes to believe that it's the whole story. And that as we let go of that particular function of consciousness, which we identify with thought, thought, as we would usually think of it, actually goes on uh, in the background. It's just, there's nobody there thinking it. Or does that not uh, correspond with what your experience is? Well, for me, it's still almost all the time. And yet, functioning still takes place. Uh, we've used the metaphor, which really came from cognitive neuroscience, of the elephant and the rider. I mean, we had this enormous, massive primary consciousness with massive computational capabilities and parallel processors and great storage capacity. Designed which, by evolution. Designed by evolution, which we call <laughs> primary consciousness. And that's that's almost all of our of our. our Do we have a percentage on that? Like of what? What if there's an argument? I was going to quote yeah. one, but I won't. Yeah. It's, it's blah blah. But let's just say it's an enormous percentage. Yeah, but on top of that, as yeah. we talked before, you know, we we form seventy thousand years ago this secondary consciousness, this rider on top of the elephant, that does all the, the self referential blah blah blah. Probably useful evolutionarily. We talk the prior, certainly sexy prior, evolutionarily. Very sexy. Yeah. In a prior discussion, but you know what we're trying to do now is recognize that this this continuous talking up here this uh, PR guy that we carry up above here and say, well, the, the president really meant to say this, that per, that person is quiet. And so what happens then, and there's some really good research papers in the Journal of Neuroscience uh, in 2009 with this, showing that we solve problems offline. We frame the problems up in the secondary consciousness. They go offline, especially the complicated ones, the nonlinear solution ones, they go offline. Sometime later, the answer comes back up, Gives to the, to the writer. Writer tells everybody else how to solve this problem. That function stays unimpeded because it's all done offline. It's all done on primary consciousness. So all we're talking about is you can keep primary consciousness. You have your graphical user interface, this 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 talker to communicate to others and frame the problem and send it back down. But he do, isn't there for all the useless stuff, all the stress causing, problem craving generating, desire generating functions. There just aren't there. This is very consonant with my own consciousness, even giving the talk that I just gave yes, yes, at Psychedemia, yes. which was it's that... Beautiful. Great talk. Fantastic you know, I, talk. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know who gave it, yep. because find it. it's it's really very interesting. I mean, And that's what I mean by saying, well, 
thought happens in the sense that like analysis happens, response happens, information is organized and, and responded to. But I literally, my body was standing up there. Right. I, uh, I began and then I don't know what happened. And there was a moment when it was clear that it was, you know, I had some internal cue that it was time to wrap it up. And then the wrapping up came out of my mouth and I was done. But, 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 but I've told you, <laughs> without patronizing you, yeah. there was a, a mass, I don't know, how long does it talk, 25, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, what? I don't know. But, but a mass of highly complicated, interrelated information from many different areas pulled out. Just, that I had no... You had no idea how it was happening. <laughs> and, and it's people, so but, but you were functioning at an, uh, almost an astonishing level. Just an astonishing. It was like, my goodness, this guy is brilliant. And he's, but he's pulling it from 20 different directions do, 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 in answer to all the speeches before. So this was, a, to me, a, a tremendous display of intellectual prowess and dexterity. And yet, you didn't do it. No, exactly. And there was nobody in there. You couldn't have premeditated that because it was coming out so fast, yeah. so cleverly. It's like playing the piano. You don't decide just, which finger is no, going to go. It was just yeah. coming out completely untouched. It was beautiful. So I, I think that, that was, that's important to say because I think when people hear, oh, well, you know, Gary Weber stopped thinking. <laughs> it's like, how does he decide what kind of a car to get? Well, you know, that's a different discussion. But... You know, it happens, right? And in fact, it happens with greater velocity and alacrity uh, and, and, and depth than it does when there's this filter there saying, well, I don't know if I should say that or, you know, you know right. they're not going to, you know, it, it, the, that actually gets quite in the way. Mm -hmm. And mostly what it says is, um... Right, you know, uh, um, um, uh, <laughs> or it could be this, or it could be that. Yeah. You could not have given that talk if you had dropped if down there. into that state. No. You couldn't have given that talk because no. it was so on point, so fast. Beautiful. Perfect demonstration. So that is what it means to be. By someone who thought. makes their living thinking. Right, exactly. And so I think we've <laughs> conflated thinking uh, with that reporter on the yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. The guy, um, blah, blah, blah. Which is exactly the opposite because that reporter on the thinking is actually a very tight nozzle. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, uh, and not much can get through. Um, whereas if you just let go, there everything is. you've been doing all your life has been infinite rehearsal for whatever it is you're saying right. then, right. and it just comes out.